What's the most X-Files-like experience you've had in real life? Story one, late to the party, but I'll share anyway. One day I'm over at a friend's house and we go into the kitchen to do something. Both him and I are moving around the kitchen. All of a sudden we hear a pop and then there is a small spot of orange gooey stuff on my friend's shirt. To this day, we have no idea what it was. Looked around the entire kitchen and didn't find anything that looks similar to the goo. We just chalked it up to an interdimensional being on my friend. Story two. This happened when I was either eight or nine. It involves a weird incident with my twin brother, and for a long, long time afterwards, I thought I had dreamt it. So it was early evening after the sun had gone down, and I was downstairs in the living room watching TV. My brother was up in our bedroom reading. At some point, this really uncomfortable feeling came over me, and I thought that my brother needed my help. I went upstairs, and our bedroom at the time was at the end of the hallway. As I walk down the hallway, and I'm standing right outside our door, and right as I go to knock, I hear a voice say, I have to leave now. He opened the door and said, I think someone was outside the window talking to me, but the only thing I heard was that they had to leave. We were both creeped out and told our mom what happened, but nothing ever came of it. For a long, long time, I thought I had dreamt this, but a few years ago, my brother asked me, Hey, remember that time when we were kids and someone was talking to me through the bedroom window? Remember how he left right when you came into the room? What the hell was that? Because he remembers it exactly the way I do. I'm convinced this really happened. Story 3. Not as spooky as some other things I've read, but I was sitting at my computer with my door kind of cracked open, enough to where I could see out. My door is right next to my desk so I can see out. I then see like five men in suits walk up the stairs and start walking to my room. I should be freaking out, but I can't seem to move my head. Then they reach my room and kick the door open all the way. Then suddenly I can move my head again. All the men are gone, but my door is wide open. Still freaky to think about sometimes. Story 4. Nothing too crazy, but definitely creeped my wife and I out. We have a Wii. The sensor bar is on the TV stand directly in front of the TV, as is anyone's. We don't have the cord wrapped up or anything. It just hangs behind the TV in a jumble. One night we were watching TV cuddling on the couch, when suddenly the Wii sensor bar literally flew across the room until it got to the end of its length and fell to the floor, like someone had grabbed it and chucked it across the room. We could find no explanation for this whatsoever. We had a cat and a dog at the time, but the cat was sleeping in another room and the dog was on the couch with us. We did have several birthday cards on top of the TV on display, and one of them was on the ground. So the only thing I could think was that somehow we missed the card falling, and it hit the cord, and Viola. I tried for 10 minutes to throw that card as hard as I could at that cord, and it didn't even move the bar from its place on the TV stand. Eventually, we just chalked it up to WTF and moved on, but it was definitely weird. Story 5. Background. There's a compound near where I grew up that is a supposedly decommissioned AT&T Cold War Communications Center. It sits at the end of a dead-end road isolated from any houses nearby. On the outside, it looks like a small, mundane two-story building. Nothing exciting at all, until you find out the building is actually many stories deeper. The entire building rests on a bed of springs to absorb shock from explosions and features an underground parking structure adjacent. Over the years, there have been theories that it was a missile silo, UFO research center and something about a dark cloud full of lightning hovering just above it on an otherwise clear day. The X-Files part, prior to decommission, you could drive down that road until you almost reached a guard station. I say almost because doing so resulted in being engulfed in floodlights with a military-type security team armed with assault rifles demanding you turn around immediately. As far as I know, no one to this day knows what really went on there or what the inside looks like. Story 6 we're all convinced that something is going on in the flat above the one my parents have lived in since 2002. For starters, all of us, me, my siblings, our parents, as well as some of our neighbors, occasionally heard furniture being dragged across the floor when no one was currently living there. Sometimes we'd hear the footfalls of a running child as well. There is also the fact that in the years since we moved there, two different married couples lived there, both divorced within a year. A third couple came the brink of divorce to the point where they stopped living together for a while. She went to her parents' home, I think and he also went to stay somewhere else. Apparently in their time away, they mended things, and after hearing stories about that flat, decided to move out. No idea if they're still together as of now. Actually, before I moved out in 2009, a couple was remodeling it, apparently spent a ton of money on it, but their relationship fell apart and they never got married. Story seven. When I was 19 and my best friend was 20, we are nearly 40 now. We were driving back to my house after visiting someone at work. We were on a somewhat busy road, it was getting dark, but wasn't quite dark yet. There were street lights and business lights everywhere, so visibility was still great. This road was three lanes in each direction, and there was a concrete median dividing the traffic. I was in the left lane next to the median, and a traffic light was coming up. 
I saw a man standing in the media in a good way before where the crosswalk for the light would be. It instantly made me nervous. As soon as I thought that, he stepped out to cross the street. My best friend and I both instantly braced for impact as I slammed on my brakes. We went through him. We didn't hit him, and because there was a car to my right, I wasn't able to swerve out of my lane to avoid hitting the man. I looked in my rear view and there wasn't anyone there. I had come to a complete stop and we physically turned around in our seats to see how he had jumped out of the way. There was no one there and no way he could have run off or hidden anywhere that fast. We both turned toward each other and almost in sync asked each other, Did you see that man? We both saw the same thing. A man couldn't describe his face, but it was a man's form. And both of us remember being confused as to why B was wearing a white robe and both being terrified that he stepped out in front of us like he was committing suicide. I had a baby in the back seat. She was about three months old. She had been crying during the drive and went silent when we came to a screeching stop, which added to the weirdness of it all. We still bring it up occasionally, and neither of us can come up with an explanation for what we saw other than something supernatural. Also, we both saw the white cloth fling across the windshield, like he was hitting it, but there was no impact, nothing. It was like he went through the car. Story 8. Oh, okay. This one scarred me for a couple of months. When I was in high school, a guy and I got into an argument. He socked me in the jaw and started to fall to the floor. When I hit the floor, I instantly transported to a dinner table at which I was an adult. There was a woman sitting across from me with a toddler boy and a preteen girl. I got a good look of my surroundings, a relatively modern house with what looked like two floors. I felt like I belonged here, like I had some sort of emotional connection with all the people in the room, especially the kids. Then the woman, my wife, asked me a question. When I opened my mouth, I threw up all over the table and woke up in a stretcher in an ambulance. Hours later, I found out I just had a minor concussion. For a while, I felt like I left a part of my life behind, even if it was only for a bleak moment in that world. To this day, I can still clearly remember all their faces and what the house looked like. Story 9 I was driving down the highway about 3 a.m. when a semi-truck pulled alongside me, then swerved into my lane, running me off the road and down a very steep incline. I remember going over I gunned the engine why I don't know. But as I was going downhill, I kept telling myself to step on the brake. I couldn't move. It was like someone was holding my foot down. Then I heard this voice tell me, okay, now you can step on the brake. Neither my infant daughter nor myself were injured and the only damage to the car was a hole in the oil pan. Both the tow truck and the highway patrol officer were incredulous that I didn't roll the car. They told me if I had tried to stop any sooner than I did, I would have probably killed us both. Story 10 in my hometown area, there is a ghost story about a large gray bull that roams the local farms and bellows when seen only to vanish into thin air. When I was a boy in the scouts, I heard that story at a meeting, and it made my blood run cold and gave a distinct taste of salt in my mouth. One of my earliest memories was being in the bottom of our fields at home and walking back uphill towards our house. I looked up, and in front of me was a gigantic grayish-blue bull standing between me and the house. I had never seen it before, and we didn't have cows, so when it bellowed I turned tail and ran down through the field. When I looked back behind me, in a wide open field with nowhere to go, it was gone. My grandmother didn't believe me, of course, but years later she was our den mother. And when that story was being told, I looked up at her across the room, and she was already looking at me, and white as a ghost. Story 11. I have a friend who once told me about a time when he was in his teens. He slept in a bunk bed with his brother in the lower bunk. He said he dreamt a demon wearing the skin of a man threatened to kill his brother. In order to save him, he somehow managed to procure a knife and put the knife to the neck of the demon. The demon tells him, the only way to rid evil is through evil. He hesitated and woke up to find he was pressing a butcher knife under the neck of his younger brother. He was still sleeping, fortunately, but when he awoke, he told the same dream exactly, except he was attacked by his brother in the dream and said the exact same thing. The only way to rid evil is through evil. Nothing similar happened after that, and it gave him some serious issues that led him to go through psychotherapy for a while. I can't say if it's true or not. As far as I know, he made the whole thing up, but I don't think so, as he was reluctant to mention it. Story 12. Driving south down a back road parallel to a bunch of farm fields that end about three or four miles at a heavy pine tree line, and the road curves hard to the left, east. It was about 8 p.m. when I was on my way home from work, so the sun was setting to my right, west. I was probably listening to music just zoning out, waiting to get home, when just past the tree line, I saw this smallish orange ball of light. I rose up from behind the trees pretty slowly and came to a hover about one or two finger thicknesses above the treetops from where I was. Instantly, I'm thinking this isn't the sun because when I looked to my right, the sun was setting. Now my eyes are f***ing glued to this thing, and the whole time I'm hoping my car isn't going to mysteriously shut down either. But while I'm thinking that this orange ball is getting bigger and turning yellow, while another smaller ball of orange light starts rising up next to the first one, 
and the second begins to get bigger and turn yellow as well. I can't f***ing believe what I'm seeing, and don't think anyone else will either, all the while trying to make sense of it. These two yellow balls of what I assume are light are now hovering above the tree line that I'm heading reluctantly toward. But once the second had matched the first in shape size and hovering height, they both just seemed to move south as they got smaller and smaller until I couldn't see them past the horizon. There was no sound that I could hear from it them either. Military veto well or otherwise, I still really want to know what it is. I personally think it was something's hovering up to take off level. Being in a forest, that's really the only way. And the color plus size change was the engines warming up before it, they finally left. Story 13. I swear I had an abduction-like experience. I went to bed just like normal, and I had what could only be rationally explained as a really lucid dream, that I awoke to a darkened room with a light above me. I was in a medical chair and what made me wake up was an extreme pinching pain around my cervix. I was comforted by a human female who held my hand and told me to go back to sleep. It felt like I was given a sedative and everything went dark. And I don't remember waking up that night, only that I became aware that I was staring at my ceiling and I couldn't move. Sleep paralysis. And when I was able to move, I rolled over. I was still scared at that point, but I managed to go back to sleep and never told a soul. It wasn't weird until I went to my next gyno appointment a month later, when I was told I had abnormal scarring on my cervix that wasn't there before. So it always made me question if my experience was real. I have a hard time talking about it for fear of being thought of as crazy. Story 14. I walked the two miles home from my closing shift at Taco Bell. The whole time I felt uneasy. When I get home, I have a brief moment of relief as I shut and lock the door. I still lived with my folks back then in their split foyer house. The basement on the front of the house was half underground, while the back was not. So at the entryway, I turned on the basement light for a second to make sure the floor was clear of my brother's toys. After confirming it was, I turned off the light and walked down the stairs. Sometimes you get that sensation in the corner of your eye, that something's there. And before you realize what's going on, you're staring at something outside the window. I only saw red, glowing red eyes staring back at me. I was frozen. It had to have been over seven feet tall. Then I bolted into my room, got under the covers, and stayed there for a few minutes hoping I was just imagining it. Then the back porch door opened, and my dog who was kenneled right next to the inside door to that same porch started going shit. Thank God for that, I thought, as I heard the porch door open and close again. Story 15. When I was younger, I was really into looking at creepy places with my friends. Most would find nothing, just strange shadows, or sounds that we would convince ourselves was much more. One night we went down to Witch Road as we heard there was a strange cabin in the woods that was supposedly terrifying. Generally, we did a lot of research on these places to learn about them, what other people have seen or experienced, but this time we did none of that. Found the address, printed out the map quest directions, and took on the road. The road is truly out in the middle of nowhere surrounded by woods. It was about 8.15 midsummer when we parked on the side of the road just as it was turning dusk. We got out of the car and headed to the trunk to get our flashlights and backpacks. We rounded the end of the car and I saw the cabin. I gestured to my friends to look at the cabin. Just then we saw what looked to be an orb that was slowly moving towards us. It was far enough in the distance that we couldn't make out distinctly what the shape was. It wasn't scary, didn't make me anxious, it did the opposite. I was incredibly intrigued and curious. I started walking into the woods. Leaving behind my backpack and flashlight, my friends closely followed. Breaking the silence, we heard crashing through the woods as a man appeared running towards us, holding a lantern, and telling us that we had to leave. We asked no questions and headed back to the car. The adventure was over. We were all silent and in a daze driving away, until my friend said, Wait, did that guy have a f***ing lantern? What year is he from? Still a strange, weird moment in my life. Story 16 I stole a picture from one of the historic houses in Old Town San Diego on Halloween for fun with my girlfriend. Picture was painted in the 1800s. It was Jesus praying in a hallway. Upon closer examination, there was an alternate black devil-looking Jesus, hidden in the shadows of the painting. Took it home and put it in the closet. Randomly on nights, I would smell the worst smell in the world, and wake up and see what looked like a black smoke cloud. I moved three times and still saw the same shut. Finally, my roommate saw the same thing, so I knew I wasn't crazy. Long story short, I brought the picture back to where I got it and told one of the employees what I did and apologized and she replied, don't worry, they always come back to us. Story 17. I was sitting out back at my old place at about 4 a.m. during the summer. There were some railroad tracks behind the APT buildings. I was sitting parallel to the tracks, just drinking beer and listening to music through some headphones. All of the sudden, I see something in my peripheral vision. I turn my head and see this gold glowing humanoid figure is walking on the tracks. It looked like a human but with no discernible features, and it was glowing gold. I had my eyes on it for about a second before it went behind some trees. 
It's the only paranormal experience I've had that I haven't been able to find an explanation for. Then again, I was pretty sauced by this point, so it takes away from my credibility. But I usually don't see glowing figures while drinking. Story 18. Lost Time. My brother was helping me across the country. We borrowed a van and loaded everything up for the last trip. Just before we left, I checked my watch and called my GF that we would be hitting the road soon. My brother checked the kitchen clock, but only told me later he did. We set out, but couldn't do more than 80 because of the load. When we took the off-ramp of my new city, my brother told me he couldn't remember the trip. When I thought about it, neither could I. We both thought we were tired and thought nothing of it. However, when we arrived at my new house, my girlfriend asked if I broke the speed limit because we were almost an hour early. When retracing the route, my brother and I both agreed that we can remember passing a certain gas station and nothing thereafter until the off-ramp. To this day, we have no clue what happened during that hour we're missing or how we could have traveled that fast. Not with any car or van, at least. Now, at the beginning, I wrote we both independently checked for time. This is important for us because one time source could have been wrong, but not both. Also, I called before we left, which limits the time we could use to travel. Since then, we have never experienced any weirdness like it or otherwise. I don't have any weird memories or dreams. No pieces of metal lodged under my skin, etc. Just an hour I lost. Story 19. I had a scary experience when I was a kid. I was eight and fast asleep in bed. I suddenly woke up to my dog, who was also in the room, barking and viciously growing at the corner of the room. I'd never seen him or heard him like this. He was a cool as a cucumber laid back Pete. He didn't have a nasty bone in his body, so it instantly freaked me out. It was dark. I couldn't see anything there. My eyes started adapting to the light, and I could see him snarling and barking. The hairs on his back were standing on end, but there was nothing there that I could see. My mum came rushing in and turned the light on. There was nothing there. She tried calming him down and moving him away from the corner, but he kept going back. She ended taking him out of the room, made sure I was okay, then shut the door. I kept the lamp on. I was scared at this point. Then a few minutes later, Benji was back at my door crying and scratching to get in. He'd been our family pet since I was born, and he'd never done this before either. I let him in and got him on the bed with me. He sat on the end of the bed all night, ears pricked, staring at the same corner of the room. It never happened again. Nothing like that ever happened again. But that night damaged me mentally, because even now, at 34 years old, when I sleep alone, I can't go to sleep without the TV being on. Story 20. When I was a teenager, multiple times I could have sworn that I heard a woman calling for help during the evening while I would be standing outside of my parents' house. It was always just loud enough, though, that I would stop what I was doing to listen and then dismiss it after I didn't hear anything else. I mentioned it to my friend at the time in passing. He got all serious and told me he had thought he heard the same thing on multiple occasions while leaving my parents' house. We got all freaked out and were thinking it was some weird X-Files thing. Now that I'm older, know how f***ed up the world is, and reflect on the fact that my hometown had meth problem, I feel like it's much more probable that it was actually domestic violence. Now I just feel bad that I may have heard someone who actually needed help and dismissed it as just hearing things. And I feel even worse thinking about the fact that I probably couldn't have done anything to help even if I had taken it seriously. Story 21. When I was very young, my family lived in the middle of nowhere in an old two-story house, and for almost a year, weird stuff would happen. My older sister and I shared a room upstairs, and sometimes we'd wake up to things crashing downstairs. Our parents would run upstairs to check on us because the kitchen would be trashed, pots and pans flung everywhere, and they wanted to make sure we were okay. Apparently, they'd find me talking to nobody often, and I would tell them about my friend who was another little girl that lived in our house with us. I would explain to them she lived there before us, and she was mad we were moving before mom was having the baby. They thought I just had an imaginary friend, but the wallpaper in the bathroom would be torn and dishes all over the floor in the morning. I don't remember any of this, but the mess and a faint memory of what a girl looked like that I know I didn't go to school with. My mom swears she saw the girl I described standing in our kitchen one night looking very sad. I don't know if my parents were messing with my sister and I, or what, but they waited for my brother to be born before we moved, so who knows.